unbelievable. They um, should though. They're like honestly, they're good, and they're at the point where if they can keep, um, they they have something there in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And I think like if they can keep keep the joy of it and just keep on pushing towards doing the thing that they love doing, mm -hmm. and man, I don't really see a a limit there. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, I see a lot of talent and as a three piece too, like that's crazy. What's cool is like they've got a really, really, really strong team with them. Like we call them the momagers. And then like I can't remember the dad. It's like the dad tech team. Mm -hmm. And um, but like they've got marketing like on lock, they've got like relationship building on lock, they've got social assets on lock, like they've got everyone working these parts. Mm -hmm. And it's just it's amazing to see it all come together, man. And it's really cool because I mean everyone believes in their kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they kind of like you kind of have to <laughs> in a well, sense. Yeah. <laughs> but like when the whole world is telling you, because eighty percent of their Kickstarter donations were outside of Canada. Hmm. So like when that happens, it's like I'm now much more willing to be tired. Back to that whole thing of like self discovery and everything. It's yeah. like this is like an opportunity that you can hand off to your family. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah, I'd be up all night writing emails too. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get that. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's really cool to see, yeah. like. um I mean, Canadian for sure. I'm always excited for that. But like starting off so young, yeah, you just have such a leg up. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And, oh, man, we'll get into this because I want to talk about it in a bit. But um, we, I got to interview the band before the single release. Yeah. And um, I, we asked, the audience asked what the song was about. It's called Glitch. Yep. And what it is is it's about being like an emotional sponge, an empathetic sponge. No way. And she's saying that if we were robotic, we wouldn't feel these things. Hmm. And it's saying like, you know, we'd still have tears left to cry because it's like, you just, you just fill them back up. Hmm. <laughs> like instead of like the other side of that is like, I'm out of tears. Like yeah, I, can't, yeah. I can't do this anymore. Right. Yeah. And I just went, excuse me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, and they, it started as an acoustic chorus and they turned it into that. Perfect. And I just went like, it's the way it should be. Yeah, man. Yeah. Man, that's epic. Yeah. Uh, so, who's the lyric writer? Uh, Quinn is the. She's the guitar player. Wow. Yeah. Man, so she'll come deep. with like an idea, um, and then they'll work around it to build the rest of it. And then mm -hmm. like if they all vibe and that they're cool with the idea, she'll keep coming up with the verses. But Aria, the bass player, is saying harmonies on the record too. Nice. Um, and so I'm assuming that she probably has like a hand in it, or they probably bounce ideas and stuff off of it. But Quinn does the most of the vocal nice. writing. Yeah. The bass sounded massive too. Oh, dude. That I, that's the nice thing is just, it feels like they're all taking up space yeah. in, in the right way. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Because like so so often, especially if you have more than three piece, it's kind of like, I don't know, filling the puzzle correctly is tough. Mm -hmm. And when you strip it down that much, all of a sudden, man, you got to take up a wide footprint yep. in order for just to have the thing feel balanced. Yeah. And they're doing that, which yeah. is wicked. Yep. Yeah. And it's in a way that I still think they'll be able to recreate live. Yeah, well, yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. put a put a keyboard patch in the back because there's like this arpeggio thing going on mm -hmm. and make the guitars big and wide and let's go. Yeah. Right? It's hard though, because you got nowhere to hide. Yeah. You know, it puts a lot of pressure on on performance and like the individual players because yeah. you're you're taking up thirty three percent of that pie, right? Yeah. Check this out though. So they're getting their click tracks and everything worked out. And I like, you know, that's always a transition, right? Oh yeah. The drummer did the whole EP in two sessions. And he was like, it was perfect because I just got to sit back and watch. <laughs> awesome. I just went like, I don't think you understand what you just said. Yeah, yeah. As a 15-year-old drummer. Yeah, that's nuts. Two two sessions, two yeah. days. That's absolutely Did nuts. the whole EP. And it's like, I'm pretty sure it's his first time in the studio. He's performed with bands before and stuff, mm -hmm. but like first time in the studio. That's nuts. <laughs> like, I guarantee you that no producer's going in there and fixing all the fast takes and stuff. Like, not a ton at least. So mm -hmm. it must have been good takes. Hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, man. Just even to do, like, I know people don't understand things when it comes to recording as to how much stuff takes time. Like, just say you want to do one song, yeah. right? One three-minute song. Well, depending on how you're going to record that, more than likely you're not going to record that the whole kit through. You're going to have to do punches or something. But if you do happen to get a full playthrough, okay, so you do the playthrough, you do your listen backs, and then... You're gonna to have to do it probably three to five times, which is well, physically even, even if horrible. you do a one take playthrough, yeah, it's still probably gonna take you four, five, six, seven times to get the like groove in, yeah. and you still only have demo tracks to work with, or yeah. your band playing with you in the control room, yeah, like. And they made re they made arrangement changes. Shout out to Jordan from Udeli re Recording, I believe, West Kelowna. Mm. Um, but uh, he was like helping them, you know, trim up intros and make things a little bit more cohesive and stuff, yep. and. Um, as far as I can tell, man, like all smart decisions. Hmm. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to hear the rest of it. That's going to be cool. Oh, man. I heard that they got the next one back 
the master back today nice. and they heard it and they're like <laughs> like that first one was just the start <laughs> nice well that's dope yeah. that's really cool you know it worked out really good and i'm gonna go into the uh warning segment here in new music um the warning was slated to drop their new song sick on february 2nd mm. and ours freeze the fall was on february 1st nice and we went oh shit like, that couldn't have worked out any better people are gonna be excited about new music yeah and then the warning goes hey guys we're releasing february 1st and we went this could be a really good thing or a really bad thing, right? Yeah. Turned out to be a beautiful thing, man. So we dropped at quarter to 11 our time, and the warning dropped at 6 p.m. our time. Mm. So everyone was geared up. Everyone was ready to headbang, man. Everyone had their headphones at work. Like, nice. It was it was awesome, man. Like, That's wicked. Couldn't have asked for a better turn, turn yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Three pieces all day. Yeah. yeah, all day. Okay, so one of the audience questions was, and I don't need to play for you a Ben Death track because you know what it sounds like. I know. So many of them. So this is, uh, my phone is going to die, so I'm just going to play a little bit of the new track. Okay. And I just want to get your opinion and your feedback. And we'll do like, I want to do like an actual breakdown of this track with you where we sit down and go through it. So question before we engage in that. Yep. So producer, right? Yep. This is what we're talking? Yeah. Do we know who mixed it? Um... No, I okay. will look up doesn't, after. Doesn't totally matter. I'm just like I I kind of view Bendeth as two different humans. Okay. He's or three different humans. He's like there's like mixer Bendeth, then there's like producer Bendeth because you see that from time to time too. Like I see stars, he was producer Bendeth, and then he only mixed one song. It was the rest was done by Taylor Larson. Okay. Or you've got um, producer mixer, where he does the producing and the mixing, which is like your. Uh, Paramours and things like that. Okay. And I, I think of them as very different humans almost. So well, it's different jobs to approach, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I don't know. We'll find out on that one. So here we go. This is sick by the warning. <laughs> it's like Kevin Riff. Yeah, I, was gonna say. <laughs> I, I didn't want to say it, but. <laughs> I'll say it. Man, that's gangster. Isn't it good? Yeah, that's got some lean to it. Yep. Mm. Yep. Okay. So I, I do want to find um, uh, the mixer. Because I'm interested. Okay. It's not Bendeth. I'm 99% sure. That doesn't sound like Bendeth. I feel like Bendeth uh, didn't have a hand in that. And that's not a bad thing. I just, like, I, I straight up almost started my YouTube channel around just reacting to Bendeth records to get started. Like, Well, I mean, it... Uh, I'm just bad at research, so it was hard <laughs> for me to find. <laughs> that's okay. Um, let me just see here. Oh, get out of town. That can't be right. What's up? No, it's not. Okay. Oh. I thought it was Steve Evitz, which would be... So strange. Oh. Um, Steve Evans is like old school punk. This is kind of he punk. Did, he did Story of the Year's second record. That'd be cool. And he did Our Last Night's first record. Okay. Um, yeah, it's just, it's not his vibe. Mm, okay. He's like a, yeah, I mean, maybe it is now. I don't know. Um, like I said, we're going to do a video dedicated to this anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so, okay. What do you think of the mix? Um, I really like the balance of things. I really like that the guitars weren't tracked to death. They were shifted and totally ran through other things, but it's a lot of singular guitars that are just done with some It sounded like there was like wizardry. two guitar uh, two guitar parts, but like four guitar amps. Um, I think it's like a lot of different techniques that, um, uh, it might be like singular guitar parts more than you might think, mm. but they're processed like... So you would call that like parallel, running them parallel. But yeah. usually what you would do, if you run something in parallel over top of each other and you start um, changing things within them, all of a sudden they start interacting with each other because they're exactly lined up, right? 